мною принято решение о проведении специальной военной операции. Ее цель – защита людей, которые на протяжении 8 лет подвергаются издевательствам, геноциду со стороны киевского режима. И для этого мы будем стремиться к демилитаризации и денацификации Украины. On February 24, 2022, the Russian President Vladimir Putin announced what he called a special military operation to denazify and demilitarize Ukraine. Putin planned to take over the Ukrainian capital in a matter of days, so he ordered a full-scale attack. Now, many analysts expected that the Ukrainian capital, Kiev, would fall in a matter of a week or less. And even some Western countries offered refuge to the Ukrainian president Zelensky and his cabinet. But what happened was the complete opposite. The Ukrainians managed to hold the Russian blitzkrieg and push the Russian troops back to the east and southeast of the country. Now, there were several reasons and factors behind this Ukrainian success. Reasons like the logistic problem that Russian troops faced during the early days of the war, the well-prepared Ukrainian army, and the use of several Western weapons. Weapons like the Javelin and, and Law anti-tank missiles, the Stinger missile, the Hauta artillery cannon, and other weapons. And this one, the Turkish Bayraktar TB2 UCAV. Since the early days of the war and footages of destroyed Russian equipment by the TB2 have been released by the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense, like this video which shows the destruction of tanks by a TB2. News suggests that Ukraine operates around 50 Bayraktar TB2s and uses them for assault and reconnaissance missions. The total damage done by the drone is still unknown for a fact, but Ukrainian officials claim that it's a great one. Like this news article where a Ukrainian official claimed that two TB2 drones managed to destroy $26 million worth of equipment in three days. So is Bayraktar TB2 as good as they claim it is? Baika, the company that produced the TB2, was founded in 1984 by Ozdemir Bayraktar as Baika Makina, a machining company specialized in making automotive parts, and in early 2000s, the company launched an R&D to try developing a local UAV. Meanwhile, Ozdemir's second son, Soljuk, was pursuing a master's degree in the US in unmanned vehicles electronics. Soljuk obtained two master's degrees, the first one from University of Pennsylvania and another one from MIT. And in 2004, Baika began the development of a mini UAV with the concept of short-range day and night air reconnaissance and surveillance applications. The first successful prototype of the UAV was built one year after, in 2005. And we can see in this video from 2005, the man who would later become a national symbol in Turkey, Soljuk Bayraktar, is presenting the UAV prototype to Turkish officials to try conv and convince them to invest in the UAV project. After the successful demonstration, Baika was awarded with a contract to start serial production. The first batch of the order by the Turkish Armed Forces was composed of 19 aircraft. The Bayraktar B, the name that was chosen for the mini UAV, is a hand-launched manned portable UAV system designed to operate in harsh geographic and weather conditions. The Bayraktar B is used by army units to scout the area surrounding them, providing valuable intel with little risk of being detected. The system offers complete autonomy with protection with a high degree of reliability and operator friendliness, making it a valuable technical asset. The mini UAV is still in use in the Turkish army. And in 2009, Baika won a contract to develop and produce a tactical UAV for the Turkish armed forces. This would later be the Bayraktar TB2. The TB2 was developed from the TB1, which was the tactical UAV prototype that Baika made to win the contract with the Turkish Defense Ministry. In 2014, after several years of, of development, the TB2 entered service with the Turkish Army. The TB2 is a medium altitude long endurance or a male tactical unmanned aerial vehicle capable of conducting intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance and armed attack missions. The UAV has the capability to conduct fully autonomous taxing, takeoff, landing, and cruise. It has a communication range of 300 kilometers, and its max payload capacity is 150 kilograms. And for the munition, it can carry four laser-guided smart munition and can stay in the air for 
27 hours. Its wingspan is 12 meters with a height of 2.2 meters and a length of 6.5 meters. And it uses a Rotax 912 engine which produces 100 horsepower allowing the drone to fly at 100 miles per hour. The drone is also useful for reconnaissance purpose. It's like a real-time imagery transmission system allows high resolution non-delay live broadcasts to be monitored by multiple users at the same time. The TB2 is armed with four smart laser guided munitions. The drone can fire from as far as 18 kilometers away. The munitions aren't heavy, but they are accurate, making them useful in taking down valuable equip equipments like this in this video where a TB2 destroys on a Russian Panzer on aircraft system which costs around 70 million US dollars, nearly 12 times more than a single TB2 unit. Now the TB2 isn't quite stealthy, or at least it wasn't designed as a stealth aircraft. But because it's small with a low speed and flies at low altitudes, this makes it harder for radars to tell it apart from any other object in the sky, like a big bird for example. That's one of the reasons why the UAV was able to take multiple SAMs without it being spotted. It's not because that the plane is stealthy, it's because that it's too small and slow for the radars to identify it as a threat. But this isn't the case in all times. Multiple TP2s have been taken down, whether in Ukraine or in other areas of conflict where the TP2 was used. Another key feature of the UAV is its price. The drone is basically as cheap as it can get. A single unit of the TB2 costs around 5 million US dollars. If we were to compare this with the American MQ-9 Reaper, which costs around 30 million US dollars per unit. Now of course the Reaper is far better than the TB2. But with the price of a single Reaper, you can have 6 TB2s flying in the air. This also makes the drone expandable. The drone was used in several places around the world, from Libya and Syria to the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict and finally in Ukraine. And in each of these places the TB2 was effective and made a difference in the battleground. In Libya it was used to hold back the forces of the Libyan warlord Khalifa Haftar from his attempt to take down the UN recognized government. In Syria as a part of the operation Spring Shield where the Turkish army and the Syrian rebels fought to push the Syrian regime forces from their attempt to take control over the northern part of Syria. The TB2 was used in this conflict and many footages released by the Turkish Defense Ministry shows the destruction of several Syrian equipments and vehicles by the drone. The drone was also used during the 2020 Nagorno-Karabakh war. The Bayraktar TB2s were used against the armed forces of Armenia with great success. Azerbaijan used TB2s to destroy Armenian artillery, infantry positions and military vehicles including air defense systems. As a conclusion we can say that Bayraktar TB2 may not be one of the best drones in the world in terms of speed, stealthness or assault capabilities. But it's an effective one. Basically it does the job in hand for as little cost as possible. Which makes it a suitable option for many countries with low defense budgets. This was the video, thanks for watching.